Hi, I'm Cam Franklin here, a retired Coast Guard officer and SAM's accredited marine surveyor with over 40 years of experience in the maritime and diving industry. I've amassed literally thousands of photos of all the bad things I've found on boats during my career as a marine surveyor. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of my favorites. We're going to take a look at each picture. We're going to discuss why they're evil. Evil! And we're going to discuss what you need to do to correct them. So hop in, buckle up, keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times as we take a carnival-like ride tour through the cavalcade of owner-induced perversions that I like to call Captain Frank's Sea Chest of Horror. Sea Chest of Horror. So this photo here shows a stuffing box on a uh, mid-sized powerboat. And if you look at it closely, you can see the stuffing box to the right. And then to the left, you have the fiberglass tube. And what that's called is the shaft log. Uh, and that is what the shaft log hose clamps to, to join the shaft log to the stuffing box. If you look close, you'll notice there is a difference in diameter between the stuffing box and the shaft log. It's probably about an inch overall. Uh, however, what the owner has done here is uh, he has used the same diameter uh, of hose uh, that would fit the stuffing box, and he's just put it on the shaft log, and he's just kind of squished it down there with the hose clamps in an effort to kind of try and Frankenstein it all together. Uh, now, you would, if you did this in the a correct way, you would have to have an adapter of some type, you know, or a transition point to properly join these two different diameter uh, pieces of gear. Uh, the way it is right now is, you know, is it going to seal properly? Well, no, it's not. And that's the reason he's got the rag underneath it. You know, it's dripping profusely. And for the life of him, he couldn't understand or figure out why is this thing leaking all the time? I just don't understand it. So I had to explain to him, well, yeah, the reason it's leaking because you have two different diameter pieces of uh, equipment, the stuffing box and the shaft log, and you're trying to join them uh, with the same diameter piece of hose. Just not going to work. So here we have an example of where the owner has removed a piece of gear. In this case, it was a, a generator that has a... Uh, you know, failed and, you know, hey, that generator, it's failed and it's expensive and I don't want to replace it. So we're just going to rip it out of there. And that's what will be going to the right where that piece of carpet is. So as part of the deinstallation, you know, we got this through hole over here to the left and we're just going to cut that hose and we're just going to leave it there. I mean, it's all right. Well, I shut the seat cock. So <laughs> the things that are wrong with this, of course, if you're going to disconnect a piece of gear, uh, not only do you have to remove the hose here, the, you know, the, the raw water cooling hose to the generator, for example. Uh, you, you take that piece of hose off, and you got to plug or cap that uh, seat cock down there. And while we're on the area subject of the seat cock, take a look at that. It is a gate valve, uh, and the valve, uh, if you look at it, the handles, rusty and damaged. Gate valves are notorious for failing. You know, just the internal guts of them are prone to corrosion. And... Unlike a real seacock, which has a 90 degree arc of operation, you can't look at that seacock there, that gate valve, and tell whether it's open or closed. So the recommendation here would be, you know, if you're not going to use that thing, at least cap it and properly put a plug in there, a bronze plug in there to cap it. And if you know you're not going to use it, uh, ideally remove the through hull and glass over it uh, during your next haul out. So here's a picture that shows uh, just because you can do something, that doesn't mean you should do it. So we've got a through hole in a seacock, got a nice uh, bronze seacock down there. And the owner uh, has tried to, what he's doing here is, this is a raw water intake for an engine. And he wanted a way to flush the system, uh, but primarily he wanted an easy way to winterize the system. So he put this T-fitting in here. And when it gets time uh, for him to winterize, all he has to do is unscrew the uh, plug at the top, screw in a tailpipe, uh, connect the hose to it, and then he can winterize the raw water or open side of the system by pumping in, you know, the non-toxic pink uh, antifreeze that you always see, you know, uh, at the Walmart, particularly during the winter. So the problem here is that he used uh, 
galvanized steel fittings, right? This is the kind of stuff you get at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. It is definitely not suitable for use uh, in the marine environment. As you can tell, you can see the corrosion and stuff. He's used a little, you know, a little coupling section to connect the T to the uh, bronze seacock. And it's just, you can see right here that this is, you know, not the proper material Plus, you don't want to mix these materials because they have different expansion uh, contraction ratios, but primarily because this galvanized mod steel is just going to corrode, and one day this thing's going to just rot right off and probably sink the boat. So the recommendation, of course, here would be if you want to do this conflagration that he's got here, uh, use the proper materials. Use bronze instead of this galvanized uh, stuff that he's you know bought at the big box store. So what we have here is a good example of gelling. Oh, it's antifreeze gelling is what it is. And it is due to an improper ratio of antifreeze to water. And just to give you a little bit of background info, most engine manufacturers recommend a 50-50 mix of antifreeze and water uh, for optimum year-round protection. This 50-50 mix provides freeze protection to down around minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit and boilover protection to uh, around 228 degrees Fahrenheit. A more concentrated solution of uh, glycol, which is the antifreeze, will increase the freeze protection, but it also reduces the cooling ability, while a more diluted mixture reduces corrosion protection. The only way to verify that you have a proper ratio of antifreeze to water is to measure the concentration of antifreeze with a floating ball gauge, hydrometer, or test strip, or refractometer. Uh, simply opening up the reservoir cap and dumping an extra, you know, gollop of antifreeze in efforts to increase freeze protection, or as the owner said here, to freshen things up and add a little bit of strength to my antifreeze. Okay, so what the problem is, when you just dump, you know, antifreeze in there without checking the mix and stuff, you can exceed this 50-50 mixture. Uh, when you exceed it by about 80% concentration of antifreeze, it can cause uh, silicate gelling, and that's what we have here. This is where the silicate corrosion inhibiting additives found in most antifreezes drops out of suspension, forming a greenish goo that clogs the system and reduces heat transfer. If gelling occurs like this right here, the system not only has to be drained, but fully flushed before adding new properly mixed coolant. And if you want to learn all that you ever want to know about uh, coolant and antifreeze and all that good stuff, uh, check out the link below. It's right there, right below there, uh, that leads to my article on the chemistry of coolant.